acid is very fun to say in an accent, but it's also an ingredient you've probably seen on the back of many acne cleansers, treatments, washes, serums, and moisturizers. But let me tell you, if you don't know what it is and how it works, how are you supposed to know if it's actually making a difference on your skin? In today's video, we are going to discuss the chemistry, the science, and the beauty of salicylic acid, and how it actually works when it comes to acne-prone skin. Let's do the music butterfly thing. Make the little do 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 do. Okay. forward it. I sincerely hope that you listen to it and that you have a dance off every single time. Somebody choreograph that for us. Anyways, today we are going to talk about salicylic acid. And as you can see, I am excited or just caffeinated. It's 2 a.m. I really have a history with acne and salicylic acid was on so many of my products, but it wasn't until maybe three to five years ago I actually took the time to understand what it was and how it works. And today, I'm going to give you the information that I wish I had so that you can figure out what this ingredient does and whether or not it's worth your money and worth the space on your face. Oh, I'm feeling sassy today. So what does salicylic acid do and who is it helpful for? Salicylic acid is usually put into acne products and it's helpful for acne prone skin, but some people have oily skin with no acne and they can benefit greatly from salicylic acid as well because of its ability to break down and stop that oil. Salicylic acid can also be used in the removal of warts, maybe even some skin tags, because it does help to break down the top layer of the skin and therefore help things exfoliate off. It is a BHA, meaning a beta hydroxy acid. So it's an acid, and because it's beta hydroxy, it is fat soluble. Remember, the oils in our skin are fats, so it's soluble within our skin, which means it can actually do some fun work. And by virtue, it is an exfoliant. So it does help to remove those top layers of the skin. Now, is there anybody who shouldn't use salicylic acid? The answer is pretty much no. Salicylic acid is generally regarded as safe. It is a compound that is found in nature or it can be lab synthesized and there really aren't any usage restrictions. Depending on how much of it you use, it could cause some sensitivity. So if you do have super sensitive skin, you might wanna be aware of that. If you are on skin thinners, whether it's a topical product or an oral medication, you don't want to overexpose yourself to the sun. So by virtue using an exfoliating product along with whatever is thinning your skin might not be good, but for most people it's totally fine, which is why it's such a great option to treat acne. Now how does salicylic acid work? This is where it gets fun. Salicylic acid mainly does two things. It breaks up oil and it helps to exfoliate the skin, the top layer, that stratum corneum that we learned about in lesson number two. And if you haven't watched those other skin science episodes and you're new here, we've got multiple weeks of learning for you to explore. What are you waiting for? said Gwen Stefani. Now remember that acne is made up of four main building blocks, the oil, the plug, the inflammation, and the bacteria. Salicylic acid works on two of those, the block and the oil. And it might be slightly anti-inflammatory, so it might work on three, which is why a lot of people use it in acne-prone skincare and why it is highly recommended and efficacious as proved by science. But what is the scientific method of action? This is where it gets really fun. When salicylic acid is applied topically to the skin, it penetrates into the epidermis and it actually loosens up the oil or that glue, helping skin cells come off. Now, salicylic acid was originally thought to be keratolytic. Kara referring to keratin, the protein in the skin, and lytic meaning getting rid of it. 
So helping to break down or get rid of the keratin protein in the skin, helping it exfoliate off easier. But there have been some new scientific studies that have actually shown it works differently. Salicylic acid actually breaks down desmosomes, desmologen proteins. And if you remember from some of the earlier skin science episodes, the desmosomes are these funny looking protein guys that hold our skin together, kind of like staples. It's why our skin doesn't slip around and totally fly off in different directions. Salicylic acid does break those down very carefully so that the very top layer of the stratum corneum can come off. This is great for people with acne to get rid of that plug. And because it also works on the oil and a little bit of that inflammation, it is a double whammy. Most salicylic acid that you can find in products is over the counter at around two to 2.5%. But if you do go to a doctor or to an esthetician, you could get a salicylic acid peel. You could get a peel that is a Jessner peel that has salicylic acid in it, or you could get higher percentages of salicylic acid. The higher the percentage, the more concentration there's going to be. And with more concentration, it works better, it could cause more irritation, and it might go a little bit deeper. So where does the salicylic acid come from? It actually is found in nature, but it can also be made in a laboratory. In nature, it comes from the white willow tree or the wintergreen plant. It can be extracted, or again, because we understand its chemical structure, we can make it in a lab, and it works just the same. Salicylic acid is also what's in aspirin, the painkiller. In nature, sometimes bears actually chew on the leaves of the willow tree when they're in pain. People started questioning why bears were doing this, and then they realized that those willow leaves and the bark actually had properties that killed pain. Hence, one of the ways that salicylic acid was discovered and found to be helpful. My experience with salicylic acid has been positive, but my acne was too severe for salicylic acid to truly work. Because it's so limited over the counter, and because even in peels it is not the most powerful ingredient, it didn't do a lot for my skin. And I found that when I would repetitively use products that had salicylic acid in it, it would improve my skin to a certain point, but then it would kind of plateau and nothing would change. And I would still be left with these deep cysts that those acids just couldn't penetrate to. So salicylic acid is medically proven to be helpful. It has been shown for many years to create some positive changes in acne prone skin. But again, there is not a one size fits all solution. Your acne might not be responsive to it or your acne might be more severe and you'll find that other products or treatments work better. But at the end of the day, this is how salicylic acid works. And now that you understand, you have a better knowledge when it comes to reading your labels and knowing what will or won't work for your skin. I'll leave some recommendations for salicylic acid products that I personally trust, but remember that there are other ingredients you can mix into your skincare that can make them work better for you or that can make them absolutely useless. If you forgot what those are, watch the other skin science video. So it's time to get friendly with your skincare, to understand how it works for you so that you can make it do what you want it to. Every single week at 11 a.m. we have a new episode that discusses the chemistry of our cosmetics, the biology of beauty, and the science of our skincare. So go ahead and use your motor neurons to tickle that like button and the subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss it every single week when it comes out. Even mark it on your calendar or have Siri or Bixby do it for you. I will see you next Saturday at 11 a.m. right here to get empowered by your education and in the meantime remember to be beautiful. Stay hydrated and I'll see you next week on Skin Science.